Pin your JavaScript dependencies like now. Also, some fun Visual Studio and .NET updates and the greatest version of Linux that you will ever see. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate at Microsoft. And my hoodie this week, I decided to do a little throwback to a much loved but now dead brand, Blockbuster. Uh, this hoodie is actually merch from the last Blockbuster in existence that is in Bend, Oregon. And also, if you haven't seen the Netflix documentary on this VHS Oasis, you should definitely check it out. Okay, enough of all that, let's do this thing. So the first thing that I want to note is just kind of a quick programming note. Uh, we'll be taking a few weeks off and coming back with a few differences. And this is all really good stuff, but I wanted to let you know that. We will be back uh, better than ever, but we are going to take a couple of weeks off. And while we're gone, I would love to know from you, the viewers, what types of content you'd like to see more of. And there's always so much news to pick from each week, and I have my own preferences, but I would love to hear from you. So let me know down below or tweet me at film underscore girl. Okay, moving along, I'm going to link to a security story from Bleeping Computer about some stuff happening in the NPM community right now. And the TLDR is that the maintainer of the Node IPC library has made some changes to the package, which is downloaded over a million times a week on some ideological grounds that could have some pretty nasty consequences for users depending on where they live in the world. And I'm not going to debate the rationale around this sort of change. That's up to the individuals to decide for themselves. But the net result is that projects that use this particular library, and there are a lot of them, could be putting their users at risk if the latest version is used. Anyway, this is like the second such quote unquote supply chain attack to hit the Node community this year. And as such, I feel that this is an important time to remind people to pin their dependencies, at least with this specific library and possibly with others in their JavaScript projects. So pinning is essentially telling your project that you want to use an explicit version of a library your app depends on. And by default, package managers like NPM and Yarn use Simver ranges in package.json files, but that can sometimes lead to problems in situations like this. And so I've got some resources that are linked below that talk more about the philosophy around pinning your dependencies and how to think about it, as well as some articles uh, from an open source security consultancy that talks more about this specific attack. Uh, but my gut tells me that this sort of thing is going to be happening more in the future. So this is just something that you should be thinking about. All right, so last week I mentioned that Visual Studio was turning 25, and the 25th anniversary event took place this week, links are below, and it has some great insights and memories from the VS team members, as well as some updates to Visual Studio for Mac and Windows. So on the Mac side, Visual Studio for Mac 2022 Preview 7 was released, and it brings back Xamarin um, uh, mobile tooling as, supported, as a supported experience, and it introduces Azure Functions v4 tooling supporting uh, .NET 6 and M1 processors, which is all great. But it also brings some very cool remote Mac OS C++ support. And so in this latest release, users who want to develop cross-platform C++ apps for Mac OS can now make use of Visual Studio's Linux tools with CMake to target the Mac. And there is going to be some setup required on the Mac side to enable the support, but then the Mac is treated just like any other remote like Linux target by Visual Studio. So there are still some caveats you'll need to be aware of, but I think this is just straight up cool. And I've got more info on all this linked down below in the show notes and the description. But of course, macOS wasn't the only version of Visual Studio to get some updates. Preview 14 of .NET MAUI, or the .NET Multiple Platform App UI, is now available in Visual Studio 2022 17.2 Preview 2. Say that five times fast. OK, so most of this preview is about fixing various issues. But there is one new feature um, that desktop devs are really going to like, and that is the menu bar. And even though a lot of desktop apps now build their menus into the content window of their apps, there's still a strong need for a traditional menu that resides at the top of the app window on Windows and in the title bar on Mac OS. So this is really great to see. There are some other highlights, too, which you can check out in full at the site that I've linked to below. All right, and now just rounding out real quickly our Visual Studio adjacent corner, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that .NET 7 Preview 2 is now available. Now, this is the second preview of .NET 7, and it includes enhancements to regex source generators, progress moving uh, native AOT from experimental status into the runtime, and it has a major set of improvements to the .NET new CLI experience. 
More details are, well, you know what I'm gonna say in the show notes down below. I also wanna give a huge congratulations to the Go team on the release of Go 1.18. Now this is a massive release that brings a bunch of new features and performance improvements, but it also makes the biggest change ever to the language. So with Go 1.18, the team is introducing support for Go's most oft-requested feature, generics. And uh, this is a big deal, and the team has spent a lot of time thinking about the design and how it'll work. And the Go team says that the majority of users will be able to use the generic support today, but that subsequent releases will provide additional support for some of the more complicated generic use cases. Insert generic joke here. Uh, okay, so the new version of Go also brings fuzzing as a fully integrated part of its standard tool chain. And there's also a new workspace mode, which will make it simple to work with multiple modules. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge Go person, although I respect the language a lot, um, but they have such a killer mascot, and this sort of stuff is really great to see, and it makes me excited to play around and, and learn more Go going forward. Going forward, that's, okay, I'll stop myself now. <laughs> All right, and now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay, so for years now, my very favorite version of Linux has been the Hannah Montana Linux distro that came out in like 2009 or 2010 or something. I don't know, but it's perfect and it encapsulates a true vibe. It's the best. But that all changed this week when I discovered Hot Dog Linux. It's based on Slackware, which means that it actually has serious nerd cred already, but Hot Dog Linux, which stands for horrible, obsolete, typeface, and dreadful on-screen graphics for Linux, is a tribute to the best Windows theme of all time, Hot Dog Stand. If you're not familiar, Hot Dog Stand was a Windows 3.1 theme that should never have been made, and yet it was released. It's mustard yellow, ketchup red, and it's the greatest and also like the worst thing at the same time. It's, it's truly something you have to see. But Hot Dog Linux doesn't stop there. It also has a user interface that mimics the Amiga, the Atari uh, GEM operating system, and even a bunch of variants of, of classic Mac OS and even classic Mac OS X. It's amazing, it's on GitHub, and I aspire to live in whatever world it exists in. So to the author of this amazing distro, Arthur Chong, I salute you. All right, and that's it. Let me know your favorite desktop theme in the comments down below, as well as your thoughts on any of the other stories this week. And be sure to offer your feedback for the stuff you'd like to see more of in the future. If you like this episode, go ahead and give us a like on YouTube and subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all your nerd needs. See you next time.